Yo, 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 what is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, the franchise player, Double B Bad Blood, here once again on the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. And man, I got a special guest today. Here at this Body Slam.net exclusive, the last real man of professional wrestling, right here, right. ladies and gentlemen, Silas. Brother. Thank you. Thank up? you for having me. Oh, man. It, it, I'm sorry we had to have you under such shitty circumstances, my man. Um, wow. I mean, this is some crazy shit to happen today. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is the uh, the first interview I've done about this, too. It's uh, definitely an eye-opening and a life-changing experience, that's for sure. So let's let's get into it, man. What was it like? I mean, did you get a fucking phone call? Did you get a, a text message, a Snapchat, a tweet? What? So, uh, you know, we actually have uh, some TV tapings coming up this next week, and... Uh, since the whole pandemic era, uh, you know, the TV tapings have been done a lot differently. There's, there's been no fans for the last almost two years. Uh, you know, there's a lot of COVID protocol that goes into all this. And uh, with that all said, we typically do a what's called a town hall meeting leading up to these TV tapings. And basically it was, uh, you know, during that meeting that, um, you know, basically everybody found out that you know, come after final battle uh, this December 11th that Ring of Honor is basically going to cease to assist or cease to exist uh, for the foreseeable future. So there's been these rumors going on that, yeah, there's going to be a reset, you know, and, they, you know, they're, they're going to work things out to where they'll be able to bring everybody back. What is the truth? Like, what what is the real, like, fucking down to earth nitty gritty shoot style the fucking truth like are you coming back are you not coming back is it like a reset is it done yeah okay so i mean to be honest with you a lot of us know basically what you guys know you know i know there there it's been said that there's a plan for a reboot at what would be super card of honor which is you know usually wrestlemania weekend in whichever city uh wwe is running wrestlemania that year uh and I, so I guess the idea is to do that, but I mean, to be honest, you know, uh, you know, working for Ring of Honor for as long as I have, you know, there's a lot of really talented guys there and, uh, you know, basically come the end of the year, uh, you know, depending on contracts for a lot of guys, no one's going to be getting paid past, uh, you know, past what your contract expires, you know, for instance, my contract is set to expire uh, December 31st of this year. So come the first of the year, I will no longer be getting paid for guys that uh, say, you know, have a contract that goes longer, say like maybe till the end of 2022 from, from what I know, uh, they'll only be getting paid till the end of March of 2022. And then whether they have to uh, negotiate a buyout or whatever, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that part. That's about as much as I know about that as far as guys getting paid. And uh, from what I heard, and this isn't like definitely set in stone by any means, but it seems like, um, you know, they're uh, basically Ring of Honor was paying everybody for two years uh, to, to not to not have shows with fans. So I got to say, I'm, I'm super thankful for that. You know, it's there's never a good time to be let go from your job. Right. You, you never can have enough money saved. You can never be prepared. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, you know. I, I understand kind of why it's happening. It's a business decision, right? Like they can only lose money for so long, you know? Uh, and it's one of those weird things, you know, obviously over the last few days, you know, we all found out about this Wednesday afternoon, um, you know, myself and a lot of the guys in the roster, you know, we've all been communicating, talking to each other and everything and, you know, discussing. And I said, you know, it sucks that it's happening, but uh, in, in a way, will it be weird to go back and do these set of tapings next week, knowing that things are going to be over soon? Will it be weird going to do final battle, knowing these things are going to be over soon? I think it's one of those things where it's really like you got to look at it from, uh, you know, uh, try and look at it from like a positive perspective. I would rather know a little ahead of time, know that I'm losing my job. So I have a little bit of time. Yeah, to get a fucking backup, you know. <laughs> yeah, get, get a backup, take some precautions, do what we got to do. Uh, you know, opposed to like a lot of guys when you lose your job in wrestling, you get a phone call or, or a, I don't know, like something UPS to you basically saying, <laughs> good luck to you, pal, but you're done now. So it, it sucks, but I feel like the way they did it, I think is pretty good. Uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, a lot of the guys that this is really affecting are guys that had 
uh, exclusive deals, you know, like myself, which meant I couldn't, couldn't work anywhere else. And uh, Ring of Honor has been good enough uh, to us to, you know, allow us to start uh, working some independent dates pretty much as of, you know, that after that phone call, basically. So, you know, I mean, it sucks, but I think it's nice that they're, it's nice that they gave us some, some notice. It's nice that they're allowing us to get out there and start working again and, you know, try and help recoup whatever kind of losses we're going to experience. I'm sorry, you're cutting out, buddy. I can't hear you. Oh, is that better? That's much better. Sorry. Okay. So, so my, I guess my big question is this in the locker room. Now, now that like, you know, all of this has happened, is there any heat? like the office like i mean it, with wwe guys got text messages like oh by the way we you know we made fucking 12 billion dollars last year but we're gonna cut you guys through the budget cut sorry you know was there any like rumblings yeah. with the guys like fuck i can't believe this like you know i mean like guys like for instance like i know like shane taylor had an exclusive deal you had an exclusive deal um Jay Lethal had an exclusive exclusive deal, and I believe uh, Flip Gordon also had one of those exclusive deals. You know, like guys like that that have dedicated yeah, their lives to Ring of Honor. Like where absolutely. are they? There's go? a lot of guys with this. Yeah, the Briscoes. I mean, there was a lot of guys that actually had exclusive deals in the last couple of years. They'd really started uh, signing a lot of guys to exclusive deals. I don't know. That's the thing. You know, there's right now. It's it's great in the sense that you know you have WWE, you have TNA, you have. Uh, AEW, even places like MLW, uh, and, and then you know there's some really good indies that you can work for as well. But you know nothing that's going to be comparable to, you know, getting a guaranteed check every month. So I think yeah. I think it's going to be really hard. But as far as if there's any heat, I mean, yes and no. I would think I think there's people that are definitely pissed. I mean, we're all pissed. No one wants to lose their job, right? But I don't think I don't think anybody. Th is taking it too personal like this is being done to us on purpose you know i think it's you know ring of honor is owned by sinclair broadcasting the biggest broadcasting group in the united states uh you know it's a business they run like a business it's all about what's profitable for them and what's not and i would imagine not running shows for uh you know two years and no fans has got to be extremely unprofitable so oh, yeah trust me it I is. Mean, i know i can say for speaking for myself i mean I have no no heat. I mean, I'm not happy about it. I, I sure as hell wish we were still working. I was looking, uh, you know, going into 2022, hoping that it was feeling like things were opening up and uh, like we were going to maybe get back to an actual traveling schedule. So it's, uh, I think whether there's heat or not, it really just comes down to the individual involved, you know. Man, I mean, it's, 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 it's one of those things that when you, you, you're looking at it from the outside, you're like, oh man, like for instance, like the like WWE was releasing people, I'm pretty sure, but I was like, fuck man, that's crazy. You know, I wonder if my spot's gonna be safe here because now they got fucking Bray Wyatt leaving. They got fucking, you know, CM Punk is coming back from, you know, being out for X amount of years. And you got Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson, who absolutely loved being there. Now he's you know, and a w like you know, you start thinking about it, like I I've listened to like other podcasts and interviews. They you know, basically they all started with Ring of Honor. They all made their name. They right. all cut their teeth there. You know, Ring of Honor is like the I, I call it the launching pad for your professional wrestling career because when you fucking make it a Ring of Honor, you you make it anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ring of Honor has been the most influential influential wrestling company in the last twenty years. You know, they have really. I mean, you look at the way WWE wrestling was, uh, like the in-ring style pre-Ring mm -hmm. of Honor, and then look at it from like, say, man, I I, don't, I can't say <coughs> an exact year, but just say like it's like the last 10, 12 years, like the 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 talent that is now you know in the main event spots for places like AEW, places like even WWE, even New Japan, it all has that that flavor or that Ring of Honor feel, you know. So it's it's definitely been a, a super influential place, and I'll be honest with you, you know working for ring of honor for a long time and knowing it was owned, owned by broadcast or uh, sinclair broadcasting I, I was kind of under the assumption that you know it was always cheap programming for them and it was some pretty good job security but you know like the wrestling business there's never such thing as there's, there's no such security. thing as job security in the wrestling business we both know that <laughs> yeah. um okay so here's something that has been kind of bothering me all day long when i heard this story 
So Sinclair Broadcasting is a is a, is a television conglomerate. They 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 don't know wrestling. Joe Coffee right. loved you guys. Worked hard to try to make sure you guys got your just desserts. You know what I mean? Like that guy right. busted his ass to make sure Ring of Honor was where it was at. But you guys had a horrible television slot. Like people literally had to find you guys for TV. Um, and then now that you guys are being clo- now the Ring of Honor is closing. Sinclair decides that they're going to buy the WOW product, the women of wrestling. The Chesta Blanchard, AJ Lee. You ever heard that yet? No, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, and so in a sense, they're replacing a a a good, legit, like fucking legendary making wrestling company with wow, women of wrestling. Right. How how how, how does that make the guys? I mean, um, you just find out yourself, which really fucking sucks. But <laughs> how 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 would that make the guys in the locker room feel that after all these years, like history makers, like homicide? I haven't talked to homicide yet. I probably should give him a call. Um, homicide, fucking y- y- yourself, uh, the bouncers, you know, um, Briscoes. Um, the Briscoes, Jay Leto, Jonathan Gresham, who is killing the game right now. I mean, I look for him to become the heavyweight champion at Final Battle. Like that—that right. that guy dedicated his life to Ring of Honor. You know what I mean? Um, and it, it's like all of those guys, including yourself, you guys bust your ass to build that, that promotion, and now you guys are being replaced by Wow. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it it sure doesn't feel good, but you know, I just try and always remind myself that you know, it's a business. You know, and uh, you know, the the, the I would assume the people making the decisions, you know, at Sinclair, you know, it's not just Joe Coff, you know, I, I, yeah. I truly believe, you know, Joe Coff really went to bat for us uh, and tried to keep this thing going. I oh, know no, he Joe's, did. Joe's a huge fan of pro wrestling, you know, and uh, I, I always felt like I was treated really well by the company. So, you know, I have, I have nothing bad to say, you know, about them, but I think what it just comes down to is just, you know, it, it's a, it's a boardroom full of executives and, it's all about what's uh, what's cheap and what makes money, but it's uh, you know it's it sure as hell doesn't make you feel good, man. So now that this has happened, what what are your future like AEW, um, WWE, NXT 2.0, Impact Wrestling? Like the world is your oyster right now. Yeah, Where absolutely. You like you know, to go? So I'll, I'll say this, you know. Uh, you know, this phone call was hard for everybody to have. Everybody was down to dumps. You start worrying about stuff. You start worrying about what are you going to do, where where are you going to get your next paycheck from, what are you going to do to pay bills. Uh, you know, I've dedicated the last 20 years of my life to pro wrestling. Uh, for me, I, I look at it as like it's, it, it's this or bust, you know. Uh, but with that said, you know, the last two years, we barely worked at all, man. We barely wrestled and uh, I missed, I missed, you know, doing shows regularly. So I'm trying to look at, I'm trying to look at this whole situation and trying to find the silver lining a little bit, you know, I, I missed wrestling. So I get the opportunity to get out there. I get the opportunity to get out there and work, uh, you know, work, work some indies uh, for a while. You know, I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, Ring of Honor is allowing us to uh, take independent bookings at the moment. Uh, even, you know, even while we're still under contract, uh, which is, you know, much appreciated. Yeah, that's um, awesome. so, so, you know, clearly, though, obviously, I would love to go to a place like AEW or Impact or WWE. You know, I think that would be the kind of the no-brainer answer. But at the same time, you know, uh, I'm excited to get out there and work. You know, I've uh, I managed to pick up uh, some some bookings in the last few days. So I'm, I'm excited to get out there and, and be working regularly again to be, uh, you know, working in front of crowds where the fans are just right there on top of you and, uh, you know, they're they're just as much, almost as much of a part of the show as you are. So, you know, I, I'm excited about it. But, you know, clearly I would like to land somewhere uh, big where you can have a, a big global reach. And that's the thing, man. You, I, I've known you for a while, and, and I, I I sit back and I think to myself, God damn, he is so fucking talented. You know, if you got yeah. on with AEW, man, like the your style would totally fit with AEW. Because... You know, the yeah, I think. Game. I mean, I think. I think I could do. I think I could do real well in AEW. You know, they got a 
uh, a lot of younger guys. There's no one that's really doing anything like I do there. So I think I think it's something I could definitely be a good fit. And I think I could be honestly, I think I could be a good fit with any company. You know, I can wrestle all different styles. I can wrestle anybody. Uh, you know, it's just uh, a little bit of we just have to see what the future holds. You know. I get you. I get you. So let me ask you three questions. First question: What is your most memorable moment with Ring of Honor? Well, I, I mean, I think uh, it's a tie between two, you know, uh, and there are two big important moments that every wrestler hopes to have, you know. Uh, number one, I think, obviously, would be the show we did in Madison Square Garden a couple of years back. You know, MSG is the like the mecca of pro wrestling. So being able to, you know, perform in front of a sold out Madison Square Garden was uh, a big one for me. And then also uh, going going to Japan with uh, Ring of Honor and working with New, Ch- uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor was uh, another really big highlight for me. Nice. If you, <clears throat> you tell your 20 year old self, this, what would you tell your 20 year old self? Which, what would you tell your 20 year old self then what you know now <laughs> like how would you uh, make, how would you make the 20 year old self more wiser to this business uh, you know what uh i think maybe uh you know thinking about opportunities a little bit more uh thinking about which opportunities are best to take and uh that you know sometimes money money isn't always the most important thing sometimes you got to look at uh you know the place you're working for um you know, stuff like that, you know, or maybe years that I wish that I would have just, you know, maybe worked a little bit harder or whatever. But, you know, I've always been working pretty hard. It's kind of hard to say, you know. Uh, yeah. I wish I could go back maybe a little bit younger, like 18, and tell myself to start even younger. But that, that's really about <laughs> it. You know? Trust me, starting at 16 was really hard on me, man. <laughs> really hard. Oh, yeah. man. 29 years later, I'm still thinking, what the fuck am I doing? Um, right. All right, and, and the last thing I want to ask you, real simple, man. What is the biggest regret you have with Bring of Honor? Uh, I think my biggest regret was, you know, that maybe, maybe, I, maybe I didn't speak up more when I could have. You know, maybe, you know, I've never been a politicker, man. I've never been a politicker. I've never been one to like try and shit on people or not get some book. But I wish I would have been maybe a little bit pro, more proactive for myself. You know. Uh, I always kind of had this this idea that if you're going to win a title belt or, you know, become a champion or whatever, you should do it because of the people that uh, are in charge recognize your talent and that's why they want to put the belts on you, you know. But I realize that in, in a lot of cases in pro wrestling that it's it's a lot of politicking. So maybe I could have been a little bit better at politicking. But, you know, I also take pride in the fact that, you know, I've been a – a two-time Ring of Honor World Television Champion, and it all happened because they looked at me and recognized my talent and what I could bring to the table, and not because I kissed someone's ass and bugged them to uh, exactly to give me a title. So maybe part of me it, thinks maybe I could have been a little bit better at it, but at the same time, I was also kind of figured that's not really me, anyways. I can respect that. Totally respect that. All right, so I got this game that I play. I think I played with you before, but we'll go ahead and shoot it one more time to see how we can get it going. Since so now the Ring of Honor is shut down. Um, the game, team with, few with, or fire. Simple, Paul. Simple. You can team with anyone in the industry, alive or dead, no matter who the fuck it is. You can feud oh. with anybody. I mean, anybody. It doesn't matter. You can okay, so I got I, 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 I to come up with each uh, one, one with uh, for each one, right? Exactly. You can fire any motherfucker you want. No questions asked, unless you want to tell us why. So, right. team with, few <laughs> with, fire. All right, so... Team, team with, I, I would say Josh Woods, man. I really enjoyed the uh, the tag team that I did with Josh Woods. You know, he's a good guy. It, it kind of helped uh, give me a little different layer to my uh, to my character. Uh, you know, he's a good dude. He's awesome to work with. And when we were tagging together, we had some pretty ridiculously good matches. And and I just the last I, time I like you were on the show, you pushed you put Josh over the last time you were on the show too. Yeah, yeah, I like Josh a lot. And then feud with. I would say feud with Shawn Michaels because Shawn Michaels is the man. You know, he uh, you you can do nothing but learn from working with uh, Shawn Michaels. Uh, and then who would I fight her? I don't know. You know, and I, I, there's no one that I really hate in wrestling. Uh, I feel like it's just too too much energy to hold on to. But uh, but uh, hold on, let me think. 
I'm pretty um, sure there's some motherfuckers that you're like, Psh, this guy was not fucking here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't think about who to fire. I mean, especially since I got fired, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling, feeling like anybody should get fired, you know the what I mean? I don't want right? no one to <laughs> That is the most diplomatic answer, and I'll tell you right now, that was probably the best answer I've gotten on this whole podcast, man. Um, so <laughs> let, let the fans know where they can find you, man, because ladies and gentlemen, honestly, if you are a fan of Ring of Honor, if you're a fan of this man right here, dude, go do me a favor. Go like, click, and subscribe on his shit. Go buy his stuff, because right now, everyone at Ring of Honor needs us like we needed them. So, yes, where can they absolutely. find you, man? Where do they find you? So, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Last Real Man ROH, which now thinking about it, I'm probably going to have to change that that oh, handle. Uh, but then you can also find, uh, you can find, um, you know, like t-shirts and merchandise at uh, ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Silas Young. Uh, and uh, you, you can find me on Facebook as well if you do a little research. A little research, yep. Yeah, it's <laughs> Don't my, look it's my personal page. page but, if you, but if you find me out uh, and you send me a friend request, I'll probably accept it. Don't go looking on my page, ladies and gentlemen, because his personal page is on there, and, and you're not gonna find <laughs> it. Um. <laughs> anyway, yeah, man. Thank you very much for joining us, man. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this interview up on BodySlam.net. That's www.bodyslam.net, ladies and gentlemen, so you can hear all about Silas Young, what he's got planned, what he's going to be doing, how he's going to rebound from this bullshit firing. And, um, hey, man, best of luck to you, brother. And you know you always got a spot at BCW Worldwide, man. As soon as we open up, the door is going to be flooded open for you. I appreciate that, man. And if if you will, uh, if you you know post something up on Twitter and tag me in it, I'll make sure to share it. Oh, for sure, man. Tweet it. For sure. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us once again on Body Slam Down at the Roundtable Pro Wrestling Podcast. We will see you guys later. Have a great day.